Alright, welcome to part 9, and we finished the basic modeling in the last one. Now we're going to set up some other things that we need to. So I was playing around with that light last time that I just saw, that you just saw. And it uh, wasn't very bright, even though it was at 30,000 multiplier. And that's because our units were wrong. So what I went, what I did was customize unit setup, metric, and just change it to meters. So currently, our lantern is 9.61 meters tall. Yeah, not, not going to fly. So let's just select um, oh, just our lantern. All right, select perspective in this too. Let's make sure this is actually working. Nope, I missed something. Let's select that box too. There we go. Let's just scale this down to a more reasonable size. So maybe maybe that we want it to be about. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe. Let's see. Um, let's see. Well, point five. So maybe like point one. No, point was too small. Point two five, I guess. Sounds about right. Actually, let's just do. Point three. It's probably about the right size. So let's bring this over and continue scaling. Because what will happen is our lights will not work if this is a wrong size. Really? Well, they might work, but it'll be a problem. There we go. So now our lantern is the appropriate size. And we can get rid of that light. There we go. Whoa, why is it? We're in orthographic, that's why. There we go. Yeah, when it does weird things, just look over here. If you're on perspective, you eat, something's wrong. So what we want to do now, I guess, is just start the basic scene. So you can see here, we already kind of have some basic dimensions. So let's actually start up with a box. And I'm just going to auto grid it to the bottom of these feet here. There we go. And you can see on the picture how we have a little bit of run out, like, you know, a couple centimeters here and, you know, a few here. So I'm going to try to emulate that. So just get this to kind of, you know, the same general look. We'll put a camera in soon. But I don't know how this is possible. This look they have is not going to Alright, let's add our camera in first, I guess. So, I'm just going to use a V-Ray camera, a physical cam. You can do this in Mental Ray 2, I would imagine. Uh, let's just pick an angle. Let's come from here, camera. And let's find out where we are in space. So I feel like... We just made a big mistake here. I don't even know. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's bring this down. Front. Z. There we go. Now we go to camera. We should be able to see something. So let's just align this to get it looking generally the same. And you can actually turn on um, safe frames so you can see what you're looking at. Okay, zoom in. And let's see, it shows this side more than the other. Is there nothing here? Oh well. So let's kind of come over here. Not quite that much. Right here. And then, let's see, the top touches the top of the frame, so let's zoom in a bit more. Okay. And it's more off to one side. So right about, oops, mm. here looks close enough. So from here, let's go to perspective and see if we can't lock our camera somehow. There we go, camera locked. I can probably, st you can, st oh good you can't, never mind. So, actually, oh crap. 
um, unfreeze all. I want to the object properties hide and freeze. There we go. Now it's not in my way, but I can still see through it. So what you can do, go to your camera here, and then make another perspective view. And let's see, get rid of the grid. Select this and convert to an editable poly. God, this this pink color. Now to all these colors it chooses, and I get pink. Why? I ask. Why? So let's start adjusting. So what are these doing? Nothing. Oh, the view is disabled apparently. Why is this disabled? Oh, I think I did that. Damn. Crap, that means it won't update until I click on it. So, let's uh, unfreeze all. Can I like undisable this view somehow? Um, hmm. D. That's how you do it. D. Okay. So, unfreeze all, unhide all, and whoa, there's box. Ah, oh, that box. I remember that box. Let's delete this box. There we go. So, now select your camera. Um, object properties, hide and freeze, okay. There we go. Now I can't move it and it won't be disabled. So, select your object. There we go. Alright, so, select these. Again, I'm just matching it to the picture, or attempting to. So let's see, this is kind of close. Okay. Um, these are a little farther away. The table seems to extend at least to here, and I would imagine a table and a lantern probably about, oh, this big, I'd say. Okay, and then click here, and just extend the table out to a kind of desk, I think it's a desk, there we go. And let's see, what else do we have here? I'm actually going to give it a bit more of an upper angle, if I can, I don't think I can, oh god, I can move it. Oh crap, that's bad, I can't move it, oh well. here. So let's save this right now. And what do we want to do now? I guess we can kind of figure out what kind of desk this is and how it's going to look. It could be a trunk. Because I can see in the picture kind of it goes down, I think. And I don't see it ending, so I'm wondering if it's kind of like a dresser or, or something. So I'm going to select, let's see, this bottom polygon here. I'm just drag it down. F2 again turns it on like that. Alright, sapphire. It's probably about good right there. About a meter. Maybe a little less. Okay, so there's our basic trunk thing. Now, on the edges of this, there's some, like a little lip. So we'll just make that bevel. This is the problem in working in small units, though, is I can't do my freeform beveling, if you will. So 
W, bring this in. Okay. And let's scale it in just a bit. Select the polygon, inset. Whoa, there it is. There it is. Inset a tiny bit. Extrude downward. Okay, and scale inward ever so slightly. Okay, and there we go. Now we have a lip on that. And let's just go here. And because none of the other parts will be in the scene, we don't really have to worry about them. I mean, you can model the rest of this if you want, but it's uh, unnecessary. So I'm going to connect W, move this up. Okay. What I'm going to do is have a mesh smooth on this as well. And of course, it's not quite there yet. So to fix it, let's go here. Uh, make sure you have everything selected. Connect. To bring it out, okay, and this way, connect, and let's do 99.5, I wonder why I can't go in point fives. doesn't like point fives. so let's just do 99, there we go, so now we have Oops, our desk with a little lip. Okay. I'm actually gonna make everything this this tan color just because it's easy to see for now. It was just the basic wood shader I had made before in Arkham Design. Actually I didn't even make it. It was already made. Oh okay. Just be black. There we go. Um. Oh, I forgot an edge. So select this way. Did I forget this edge? I did. Connect. And okay. There we go. Now it's nice and smooth. If you had a camera render out, nothing will probably happen. So I have um, global illumination turned on and whatnot, and there is no light anywhere. So, just to see what happens. Set of V-Ray light, right here. W, bring it up. And these are just my settings I had before. It would probably be a huge orange blob. Or nothing at all. We'll see. Hmm. Well, apparently nothing at all. Very odd. I wonder why. Because you'd think something would be showing Very interesting. Maybe it's too high. Although I don't think that's the reason. Huh. Well, I will troubleshoot this further, and I will see you in the next part.